Welcome, everybody. My name is Lucas. I'm the product manager for Autodesk Fred. And in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to show you some highlights of Fred 2021. But before we go into detail on the projects we did throughout the last year, let's take a quick look at our mission. With Fred, we want to drive digital transformation, empower collaboration, and democratize visualization. As you might have already seen, our 2021 release is ready for download. So let's take a look at the highlights of this really exciting release. If we are taking a look at virtual reality, we've done several things throughout the last year. On the one hand, we've improved our VR collaboration and developed the Python API. We have integrated foveated rendering and variable rate shading, a technology from NVIDIA and the Logitech VR Inc. When talking about virtual reality, it was always very important for Fred to do both, deliver out of the box functionality, but also a Python API for further customization. And that's exactly what we did in Fred 2020 update one. We shipped the Python API v2 uh, with new services and classes, but we also integrated new tools like a flashlight or measurement into our VR menu for you to use out of the box or to enhance and extend further. A promise we gave you last year was to ship more Python examples that are extensive and more complex for you to understand the API better and use as a starting point. And that's what we did with update one as well. Variable rate shading from NVIDIA is a technology we integrated and demoed throughout the last year. It's very helpful for virtual reality. It focuses the performance where it's actually needed. As you can see in the image, the area where you're looking at is in high quality, whereas the peripheral area is rendered in low quality. This saves a lot of performance, especially in virtual reality. This is extremely helpful because every frame counts. In addition, it also provides content adaptive quality control, where you can control the quality of materials selectively to additionally increase the performance of your virtual reality experience. As promised last year, we've been working on our assets, examples, and documentation. So we are now shipping overlay assets, HDR assets, character assets, but we also worked on our Python documentation and documented all environment variables. Okay, let's take a look at some overlay assets. Uh, we shipped two menus, one of them you can see in the image. It's a radial menu, which is neutral and modern. You can use it for any kind of demo. It's easy to use for any presentation, just integrate it and connect it to your variant sets or trigger animations with it. But also you can use it to further customize. Feel free to add more icons and adapt it towards your needs. In terms of providing more character assets, we've been working with a partner of ours renderpeople.com, who were kind enough to provide us with six textured, rigged, and skinned characters that are ready to use in Fred. They are part of our assets, so you just need to drag and drop them into your scene. If you want to have more characters, go to renderpeople.com and choose from the great variety of even animated characters, which are awesome and work out of the box in Fred. Another partner we've been working with throughout the last year is markround.com. So since Fred 2020, update one, we ship three free 360 degrees HDR assets plus the according backplates. We also integrated their web shop so you can purchase more of the assets directly from inside Fred. The cool thing is that as soon as you download them, they will automatically convert it into Fred assets and are easy to use in the scene. If you register at their web page from inside Fred, you will get two additional sets of HDRs and backplates. As we all know, with the rise of autonomous driving, the interior gets more and more important in the automotive design process and with it, human machine interfaces. We've been extending our capabilities to live stream interactive content from HMI design tools into Fred to connect the departments working together during the design process. We want to keep this interface open to allow any HMI software to connect to Fred. But let's take a quick look at one specific example, the Qt plugin we did together with the Qt company. As mentioned, both tools are running side by side and are live linked via a WebGL stream. The communication works via our web interface. The big benefit here is to evaluate the HMI in context of the digital prototype. So you can sit in the car in virtual reality and interact with the current state of your HMI design, including all aspects of the current state of the design. We want to bring the departments closer together and allow more seamless collaboration. Virtual reality adds the aspect of intuitive review and is the third piece that makes it even better. So for this feature, for this small plugin, you can stream Qt to Vred either from Qt Design Studio or from Qt applications created in Qt Creator. 
One of the biggest projects we did in the last year was smart references. Bringing a reference system into FRED. In the past, we only had monolithic file and now it's possible to split that up into subparts. So it's possible to reference either the cat source directly with all the benefits of automated updates, keeping the data in sync and reduce the manual update work, but it's also possible to reference FRED files in FRED files, allowing you to split the work between different people in a group or across departments. So basically what you could do is you could split one master scene into interior, exterior, engineering parts, wheels, work simultaneously. And as soon as the file needs to be reviewed, you pull everything together automatically into one master file and use that for the review. And of course, we have been working on improving our rendering capabilities in FRED. So besides GPU ray tracing, which I'm going to talk about in a second, we've been working on a variant set rendering and reworked our subsurface scattering. Let's start with the variant set rendering. It's a way to automatically render a huge variety of combinations of variants, viewpoints and environments of your scene. As spread files can be very big, containing a lot of variants, rendering all of the possible combinations would require a lot of manual work. You got to name it, you got to write it out, create the queue, so that's a lot of work. The variant set rendering tool provides you an easy way to do that for you. It even automatically assembles the name of the rendering based on the order in which the variant sets are listed in the tool. And we also provide an overview about the rendered files now. Because you can imagine if you're combining a lot of variations with different viewpoints and different environments, there could be a huge amount of data or renderings that are created. So we want you to stay on top of that and have an overview about how many images, how many layers or passes are created. And of course, it's seamlessly integrated into our render scheduling tools like the render queue and the cluster queue. A very exciting new thing is subsurface scattering. While working on the GPU ray tracing, we thought it was the right time to improve that as well. It now uses a similar approach to other rendering tools like, for example, Arnold. In general, it provides more flexibility and capabilities. So for example, something that I think is very valuable, you can now control the scattering amount to balance between precision and performance. In the past, the FRED subsurface scattering was limited to a certain amount of scattering. So I'm very happy that we now have this flexibility to provide to our customers, which provides more realism, but also more flexibility for you to choose and to achieve the results that you want to achieve. Okay, so now let's take a look at brand new capabilities in FRED 2021. One aspect that we are focusing from now on going to the future is allowing more people easy access to FRED high quality rendering. So getting access and sharing visualization assets got very easy with FRED 2021, with streaming and FRED Go. Let's take a look what this is all about. I think streaming speaks for itself. Um, we've activated streaming in FRED Professional and FRED Core, and you can now just activate the stream via our web interface and stream to any device at any time. Besides a pure stream that you can integrate into your own applications, we also ship a streaming app, which is automatically reading the variants from your scene and allows you to control, navigate, and change your scene, interact with it, change render settings. So it's also very easy for people that are not used to use FRED and they can still have a look, navigate, and easily control a FRED scene. And of course, you can join a collaboration session because streaming is more or less a different output type for FRED. So if you join a collaboration session, you can now do that in virtual reality from desktop or even from a mobile device. Very exciting and a very new thing is FRED Go. The ability to export a scene into an executable that runs without a license. The cool thing is you can choose to export it for virtual reality or desktop, which allows you to even export virtual reality experience or simply share viewable with your colleagues or clients. We make sure no IP is exposed or can be extracted from the viewable and that you can protect your file with a password to make sure only the people who should see it can see it. I think it's a great way to share data while having full control and leveraging the high quality of FRED rendering. Besides the very visible features, we are continuously working in the background to improve FRED and make it future-proof. Just to name some projects we've been working on, decoupling the annotation and the light editor. We have a separate asset installer since update one we improved the script editor widgets, which means you have all the benefits of our script editor in the script section of the variant sets and in your preferences as well. 
We've been upgrading to Python 3 and providing a way to automatically convert your Python 2 code into Python 3 by just checking the box. And we have a new installer framework which speeds up the installation process and makes it more convenient for you. Let's take a quick look at one example, the light editor. I've been continuously speaking about decoupling and reiterating the benefits. One of them is a full Python API. This is the case for the light editor. But also you'll get usability improvements like better search functionality, filter functionality, and finally, multi-selection. As you can see in the video, you can select multiple lights and change the light intensity or the color. We are planning to decouple more of the modules and expose them to you step by step. So you can expect more of this great functionality throughout the coming month. And now, finally, let's take a look at, I think, unarguably the most exciting feature of RED 2021. We've been working very closely with NVIDIA over the last years and are finally able to show the first version of RED supporting GPU-based ray tracing. This has been a long way. And before going into detail, I wanted to thank the whole team and NVIDIA for their great partnership and dedication. Also, a big thank you to Porsche for providing us the awesome Taycan dataset for this movie. Together, we have achieved something truly amazing, resulting in productivity gains and new workflows for our customers. At this point, let me quickly pause and just enjoy the great video that our technical sales team created for you. I think it's great to see what's possible with GPU ray tracing. And by the way, all of the video is real time. So it's real time captured. As you can see, there's new workflows possible. Did you just see the reflections on the door when it was opening? Interior, you can do very precise detailed shots with depth of field. You have accurate light behavior like shadows and gaps. And the greatest thing is you can evaluate in motion. So it's now possible doing that in real time, having full global illumination in real time. You can take a look at the gaps and move the camera and see how they behave. Also reflections or just the shape of the car. I think it's a great step. It's accurate ray tracing in real time and it's allowing a huge variety of new workflows. Okay, so after those great demos, let's take a look at some facts. Fred Pro is going to support two GPUs and Fred Core is going to support one GPU. One rather technical thing that I wanted to point out is that our GPU ray tracer is based on NVIDIA's Optic 7. The great thing about Optic 7 is that on the one hand, NVIDIA provides us with a base that we can build up on, but on the other hand, it's flexible enough for, to bring our expertise to the table as well. So this is a real Fred GPU ray tracer. As we wanted to provide the GPU ray tracing to you as quick as possible, we unfortunately did not finish the whole feature set yet. Features that are not supported yet are photon tracing, lens flares, cryptomat, and NURBS ray tracing. That being said, obviously we will continue to work on this GPU ray tracer and deliver the missing features to you as quick as possible. If you just paid very close attention, you might have asked yourself, what is Red Core? So I'm very happy to share some great news with you today. Um, Redcore is a new product that will be released very soon. And I'm very happy to give you the first insights in the next few slides. But what exactly is Redcore? It's an easily accessible, customizable and scalable FRED product that you can use for cloud or server applications. And it's the first tool set like version of FRED. And it will be available on Linux and on Windows. With Fredcore, you can stream to any device, so it has the same streaming capabilities as Fred Pro. It also has the same Python API as Fred Pro. It just doesn't have a UI. 
natural for server application. So it's easy to integrate, customize, deploy, and extend. You can use it for automations or pipeline integrations, and you can use it to scale your real-time ray tracing. Some application areas just for inspiration, to drive your rendering service, either an online configurator or an in-house service. You can automate processes by batch converting data, integrating Threadcore into your automatic pipeline, and you can scale your rendering. As we just discussed with GPU, Thread Core is going to support one GPU. So if you have uh, RTX server, you could run that with either eight core licenses or with one Thread Pro licenses and six core licenses. You can put that together. Very importantly, Thread Core is just the first step. A first step towards a powerful server-based equivalent of Thread Pro, which will evolve its strength over time through our modernization projects. For those who saw roadmaps for Fred already, we are always talking about the decoupling projects. We saw an example of the decoupling project in the middle of this presentation with a light editor. So we are step by step improving our Python API and Fred Core obviously is going to benefit from that. So I'm really looking forward to how this product is going to evolve its full capabilities over time.